Welcome, 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 welcome to this edition of the Houston Round Ball Review presents Let's Talk Houston Rockets, presented by Byron Riley CPA. Hey, y'all know, y'all know tomorrow is, y'all know Monday is April 15th. He's busy right now. Go to that website, byronrileycpa.com. Call 832-303-3995. Again, call 832-303-3995. byronrileycpa.com. Y'all know me. Y'all know who I am. If you don't, welcome. If you're new to the family, welcome. I am KG Chris Gardner, owner of the Houston Round Ball Review. We're going to talk Rockets. Season ended today for the Rockets. 41 to 41, 500, 19 win improvement. Jamon, how are you? Are you happy, Jamon? They had one more win than you said, or you kind of had issues with it. They finished with 40 dubs. They got 41. What are your thoughts on it? Today's game, they beat the Clippers, or what was other Clippers, but whatever. 116, 105. Started, starting five for the Rockets, I'm in. Jabari, Jock Landale, Jalen Green, and can't wait more. No Fred, no Dylan Brooks. Dylan had that bright, 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 bright yellow, sunshine yellow jacket on with uh, his chain. <laughs> yeah. And some shorts, some what knee, shorts to the knees. Dylan Brooks make, making that fashion statement that I have money and I don't care what you think. But good for him. Rockets won to finish at 41 and 41. Boban made everybody happy, I think. I wonder what Coach Udoka thought about Boban missing those two free throws in the fourth quarter. So was free chicken for all the Clipper fans in the building. Well, all the fans in the building. But Boban, I saw what Boban can do, good and bad. 13 points in 12 minutes, eight rebounds, <laughs> six for eight from the floor. Cam had 21 points, nine for 17 overall, two for six from three, but he had five assists. Five assists, young fella. Young fella's passing the ball the last week or so. That's good to see. That's a positive. A man Thompson with a triple double, his first, won't be his last, first NBA triple double, 18 points, 11 boards, 10 dimes, three steals, three block shots. He stuffed that stat sheet. Eight for nine from the floor. Jabari had 15 and eight. Didn't shoot well. Only six for 19 from the floor, but two for 10 from three. Added eight rebounds. Jock Landale, five points. Jalen Green. Jalen Green. Jalen Green. Let's talk about this. Jalen Green, one of the few players in the NBA to play in all 82 games. Salute to the young fella. 82 games. Ups and downs. Good moments, bad moments. But he played in all 82 games. And how do I say this? Do Cozen, do Chosen one? And I don't want to disrespect you. I'm not trying to, if I'm mispronouncing your name, my apologies. 19 wins is more than I thought. So it's very good for the Rockets. Salute to them. You know, I had them capping out at 36 wins, maxing out at 36. So salute to them. Great job. I think Coach Udoka should get some votes for NBA Coach of the Year for the job he did because there is a Night and day difference, a tremendous example up north, northern part of the country of a new head coach who just mucked up his team this year. They won less game this year than they did last year with the coach that left. I'm talking about my Detroit Pistons and the piss poor job Monty Williams did with, the, with Detroit. But this is about the Rockets. This is about the Rockets and Let's Talk Houston Rockets presented by Byron Riley, CPA, as the Rockets finished the season 41 and 41 with their 116 105 win over Los Clippers. Jay Mon with that that thread of if we were in the Eastern Conference, but you're not. So, you know, say it all they want to. You sound like Daryl Morey. Don't don't do that. Don't 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 do stuff like that. Don't do that. You're not in the Eastern Conference. No playoffs, but great improvement. Great thing about a man, a lot of great things about him, young fella. He likes to play basketball. He makes winning plays. Damon, Damon being picky. <laughs> Jalen Green played in all 82, but was he mentally there for all 82? Well, how many players are? 
heck, last few days, what Coach Udoka said, Rockets game looked like the guys didn't want to be there. He said plural. It wasn't just Dalen Green looked checked out. You know, Fred had to carry the load and scored all those points. Teammates didn't show up. It wasn't just Jalen. Justin says, Jalen earned one more season, but after that, Green may have to be dealt. This summer, this offseason, Rockets will exercise that uh, the rookie ex extension for him and Alp. No shock there. Justin says, Monty isn't suited for a rebuild, needs to coach vets. Then he shouldn't take the job. You know, it's a lot of money, but don't take the job. And I think he should be fired. He won't be, but uh, he sucked this year. But uh, it's about the Rockets. And Coach Udoka, Ime Udoka, Rockets. Some tidbits of info here. You already know this, but some info, some of it. The head, header is old. I kind of updated some of it. Y'all know this. Rockets o OKC, top four protected first round pick in this draft, 24 and 26. OKC has a right to swap first and 25 if the Rockets fall outside the top 10. Y'all know the Rockets have the next pick. The Rockets are allowed to trade their own first starting in 2028. The Rockets have two unprotected firsts from the Nets here in 24 and in 26. They also have the rights to swap first with Brooklyn in 25 and 27. And three of those seven picks, second round picks, have been traded part of the Steven Adams deal. Two of those will go this year in the draft and one next year. And those two, two of those three, good to have options. So sleuth to refill on this, Jaymon. But two of the three will come from either Brooklyn second round pick, which I don't think it will be it's gonna be the best of the three, Golden State second round pick, or OKC second round pick. And then next year, OKC second round pick will go to Memphis as part of the VO5 Steven Adams trade. <clears throat> I think Nate Henson's days at the Rocket are done. He didn't play a lot, still can't shoot well from three. He can hustle. He gets after it. But, you know, if, if if he's content being the 13th, 14th man on the roster, okay, there's a spot for him. But other than Nate hustling and getting some rebounds, he's still not a, a consistent three-point shooter. He wasn't that in college. So he's deeper shot in the NBA, he hasn't really mastered the corner three, which is the shorter three in the NBA, which would help him get minutes consistently somewhere in the league. But I don't believe his, I believe his days here are numbered. Rockets have a lot of talent, have a lot of options to move with, with for Rafael Stone this off season. What say you guys? What should the Rockets do? We know they need to address shooting. They have until later on this summer, well, this summer, to decide whether or not to exercise the option in Uncle Jeff's contract as well as Jock Landale's contract. Mm, one of them probably won't be back. You know, you, got, you have Steven Adams on the roster. A healthy Steven Adams is going to back up LP at the five. If he does that, then you don't need Jock Landell. Uncle Jeff could spend more time at the four. Or Justin, read my mind there. Well, here he is right here. Rockets have Adam now. Yep, I think Jock is gone. Correct cuts. How you doing, Mr. 30? What is it? 33 wins, 35 wins? <laughs> what would you end up being, B? What would you end up with? A uh, note from NBA office. OKC is the seventh different team to earn number one playoff seat in the West in the last seven years. Wow, seven for seven. That is the longest streak in the West under the current playoff format. How about that? 
in the 80s when I was growing up, it was all Lakers. <laughs> That's pretty much it was the Lakers or maybe Rockets. No, I don't know about that. Or Portland, one of those years. But that was it. Uh, now he's missed the 41 wins in the building. Oh, okay. He was 33 wins for like two, three years. But now he missed the 41 wins in the building. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, BJ says he's taking Ja. Instead of Uncle Jeff? Because, you know, Steve Adams is here. Steve will have one more year left in his contract at 12.6 mil. Anybody want to trade Jalen Green now? Or, well, in the summer? Jalen Green is going to work out with his trainer. Get better. His goal is to be an all-star this coming season. What say y'all? Can't get more. Gary says, Gary, you saying yes to my thing, trading Jalen Green or what? Uh, let's see. Justin, how do I feel? Check out the video, a little info I did about Los committing to uh, the Cougs coming from OU. It's not long, about six minutes long. I touched on a little bit, a little bit of that earlier on YouTube. I think it's a good get. Nice, solid player. Jamon says he's not opposed to trading green for the right player. Correct cuts. I want Steven Adams over Jock. I'm sorry. Wouldn't be bad to have both. Somebody be deep on the bench, though. Deep, deep. On the, okay. I mean, I guess in that scenario, one of them, Jock Landell, could replace Boban. You know, be very expensive man to be coming being the fifteenth man. No, <laughs> you know, I don't know about that. That makes sense. See, Coke, Craig Cuss doing that. Drop Boban and keep both as backups. Like I said, that's very, very expensive fifteenth man. <laughs> you know, Terry, what's up from New Zealand? Yep, you predicted forty, so you were close. But yeah, thank you for chiming in briefly. I thought about doing a show yesterday. Then I got caught up doing football stuff all day. And I was like, you know, Rockets' last game of the season is today. So just do the show after today. <laughs> so here we are. Okay. Doc says this. Couldn't, I mean, Jamon says this. Couldn't Landell take over for Uncle Jeff? Sure. I just don't believe both of them will be here. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Gary Bankston says, Jalen, the eighth worst shooter in the NBA. <laughs> just to win. Hey, I mean, I'm not going to say anything. I could say something crass. You got time to work out, you know. I mean, heck, you're making babies. So, I mean, that job's done. <laughs> his, his role in that is done. If he, that's all he wants to do. Correct cuts. What about Aaron Holiday? You tell me on that one. I think. The Rockets, they don't need Aaron, especially according to Vanessa. Coach Udoka said what all of us have thought for a while, that a man can play point in the NBA in due time, improve his handles, still has to improve his handles, tighten up those handles a little bit, but and of course improve the ball, the decision making. Does that, then you can slide Cam down. You don't need Aaron Holiday. You know, Terry says, now see, I'm more, I am more open to giving Nate Williams minutes rather than Nate Henson. And, you know, I know that's cool on cool crime saying that, but, you know, Nate Williams, he can make the corner three. And offensively, he's, he's better than Nate Henson. Terry going with this one. Bring back EG for our bench unit. Mm -hmm. Space Age says it was a great season. In his opinion, yeah. 19 win improvement. They didn't go backwards like some teams, <clears throat> some teams did. Space Age says, even though I, I think our schedule was purposely tougher towards the end. You know. That's how it was. That's how it was made. Space Age, glad you could join us. 
and glad you could join us live. Bouncing around a little bit with a whole bunch of other stuff going on, a lot on my plate. But yep, this time slide used to be reserved for FTS and folks talking sports. We'll get back to that eventually. But Willie Gibson get ready for covering the Cavs in the playoffs against Orlando in that four or five matchup. Terry says we could have won more games. We just couldn't make free throws when we needed to. It's all part of it. Justin, he's, he, but Junior is establishing a role. Got to give him that. It's a different era, but he's establishing a role in Utah. He's, he's, he's finding some minutes. And at his, at his size, at his height, and his weight, that's really all you can ask for. You know, heck, some folks, me included, think he should have gone to Houston when he had a chance to transfer from La Tech instead of going to the pros. But I, I digress. <clears throat> Space Aids, I would say the same thing as that I mentioned, Jaymon. Don't mention this. I, I'm, I'm not angry when, you, when it's posted. It is a, you know, yeah. But that's Daryl Morey comments right there. You're not, you're not in the East. Okay. So typing it, you're wasting your time saying that. Not in the East. You're in the West. So until the league, the NBA decides to move and make things fit geographically, the Rockets are in the West, and they are in a tough, tough, tough division in the Western Conference. So they have to get better and compete to get better first with the teams in their division. All right, Terry, Terry, I'm going to have a drink for Terry. Salute to him and everyone, Justin, Correct Cut, Space Age, J-Mon, everybody watching on Twitter and YouTube, Facebook. Rocket fans chiming in on all the uh, social media platforms. Much, much appreciated. <clears throat> oh, no. Like I said, you put it out there. It's a legit statement because record-wise, yeah. But I'm just saying they're not. That's all. You know, but Boston has a better record in the whole NBA. By what? Seven games. There's a gap. Was it? Boston had 64 wins, I think. And the Knicks were the two seed in the East at 50, a 14 game spread. Man, wow. It was all there for the seeds to get to come out the East. It's all laid out for them. Now they got to do it. But Rockets, improvement. All these folks started following me on Instagram now. I said, that's cool. Appreciate that. That's strange, but okay. But we're talking Rockets on this edition of Let's Talk Houston Rockets, presented by Byron Riley CPA. Again, I hope y'all have filed or filed an extension or, or whatever you need to do. Website, byronreillycpa.com. One more time, byronreillycpa.com. Call 832-303-3995. One more time, 832-303-3995. I know he's busy, swamped, taking care of folks' taxes and everything like that. But he's he came through to sponsor the show. Much appreciated to him because some folks did not come through. Haven't come through with sponsoring shows. But Correct Cut says, a part of me is glad we didn't make the plan. I know it's contrary to most fans, but I feel this was a more level season. Didn't exceed expectation too much, but didn't aim too low. Well, Correct Cut, j says, we should have had 46 wins based on point differential. Justin asks, you think Udoka really made a difference in Boston or does it really matter who coaches? 
No, I think it matters. It's important. Yeah. Coaching, you know, some some of the mistakes the Celtics made still make, taking some opponents for granted. You still got to nip that in the bud and, and lessen those bad habits. Coaching is important. It's not just, it's not all about talent. You know, you still got to make all the egos get in line and play team ball and win and want to compete and respect the game and defend and a lot of different things go into it, you know, as well as health. That's also a part of it. I mean, heck, look at the job Tibbs doing with the Knicks in spite of Julius Randle missing so much of the season with the injury. Coach is part of, part of it. Amon says, I think Udoka is going to push Stone to make a significant trade to acquire a roster that on paper looks like it'll reach the playoffs. You talking about big fella here? Well, I mean, Jamal, who you got in mind? Your GM, put on your GM hat. Who you got in mind for your trade? I know, I think I know who you want, <laughs> want to trade, but who you got in mind? Give me a trade offer. Space Age, you think the kid from Purdue could help us? Zach Eady? No. Rockets got a Rockets got Steve Adams. They don't need it. They, and they could have, according to some of you, you guys, keep Jock Landale. So duh, they don't need Zach Eady. No. <laughs> no. He doesn't solve that shooting problem. Nope. I think there is a place for him in, in the NBA. Limited minutes. But I think there is a spot for him in the league now. Big men are important. Even if you need somebody to just defend the other team's big man for a few minutes, you got to have somebody just big, big body. If he's not a low, you know, low post offensive weapon. Because you look at some teams just have no size up front and struggle against bigger players, big centers. So there's a role for Zach Eady in limited minutes because drop coverage in Zach Eady, yeah. This is the season, Justin. If Boston doesn't get it done this this year, I don't know about a panic mode, but I mean, change is gonna have to be. It's I mean, it's, with injuries to other opponents, the talent on Boston is is just laid on a platter for them to get it done in the East. <laughs> I mean, come on. So Adams, Shingu, and Landale are it for Bigs. You know, I don't know if Landell is. I mean, Stephen Adams healthy would kind of help the need for a rim protector. He's not as as athletic as he was in his younger days. But, you know, Zach Eady's not that. Not an, ath- an athletic. He's a huge young man, but he's not an athletic big man. Correct cuts. Who do I think? We move a significant trade. Is it not a scenario where you, you keep all the young talent? Or would that be counterproductive? Barring a gift from an opposing team, like a no-brainer trade, I'm okay with, with nothing major. Just de- you know, a minor deal on the fringes this offseason. Barring some, you know, like, I don't know, you know, a team says, we're going to give you a star player and we'll take back Jayshon Tate. You know, I mean, something like that, you know, where you're just getting a, a, an all-star for nothing. Someone blinks and they butt-dialed Rafael Stone and Rafael Stone convinced him into making this trade, you know. No. What's the verdict? Will the Rockets keep Shingun and Green? Or will one end up leaving? Like I said, I'm of the opinion this summer they're going to keep both up. Now, if it doesn't mesh and fit from November to February, then make a trade. But see, you know, let's see what this Jalen Green can do with Al P when come October. Jalen took a step back the last couple of games. He just didn't have the focus, didn't seem 
locked in. That was more of the old Jalen Green creeping back in. Let's see what the the Jalen Green, who was in the running for player of the month in the West, if that Jalen Green can make it work with Alpie. And, of course, vice versa. Alpie can make it work with Jalen Green. Trey Young, Donovan Mitchell, Carl Anthony Towns, PG. <clears throat> okay, let's go with the PG one because I don't know about mm, – that's Trey Young. I don't know about Trey Young making Rockets better. Um, but Paul George, Paul George. What what could the Rockets do to get Paul George? Yeah, correct cuts. Yes, to me, it's not not uh, it is not absolutely necessary this summer. No, it's not to get rid of one of one of them now. No, you know I know Tim McMahon said that and set Rocket Twitter on fire. No. Not yet, like I said, or like I say, like I believe. Unless it's just some no-brainer deal this offseason. No, I'm let this team see let's see what they can do once the season starts, 24, 25 starts. Because yes, the Rockets play faster without LP. Yes, they do. But at times they need a low post bucket and there's no LP. They were stuck like Chuck. You could see them struggling without that low post option, without somebody to toss it to on that block. You just you need a bucket. You just need someone to get down on one on one down low. You know, put LP out high, facilitate the offense sometimes, make it easier for Jalen Green at times. Jamon says he thinks it's kind of risky to bet that the same roster will get to the playoffs next year. Giving Paul George a max contract may make sense to help. But how are they going to do that? I mean, do the Rockets have enough room to give Paul George a max contract? I don't believe they do. So somebody got to go, right? So who would that be? Dylan Brooks? Would the Clippers want Dylan Brooks instead of Paul George? For you know, money might be similar as much as Dylan's getting. The Ulam says given PG and Max would gut the team's cap for a while. And see this uh, this name right here doesn't doesn't move me at all. <laughs> okay. Mikhail, no, Mikhail Bridges, gosh, good grief, no, no. Paul George, okay, but Mikael Bridges, no, no, Mikael Bridges is not Paul George, not not in his, not in his, no, not in, not even close. Jamon says they do, but they'll have to not pay one of the young core. Mm, I'm not sure that's a good thing. So let's let's just okay, Paul George is a rocket. Whose minutes does he take? And would Paul George, who I still think has, he's battling injuries and issues, all that kind of stuff too. But would Paul George be locked in and would Paul George help the Rockets be a top four team in the West and make noise in the playoffs in these next three years? Mm, um, I don't know about that. Not for all that money. Not for a max contract. Mm, um, could be wrong. I don't know. Justin says he doesn't believe the Rockets have the right pieces anyway to, to attract a star player, maybe a fringe star player. Greg Cutts, not sure I, if I feel comfortable giving PG anything, much less a max. He is a bit older, injury prone. See, there we go. Does he fit the timeline? 
Jamon says he take Dylan's spot. Justin says, I think the best the Rockets can get is maybe a Jalen Brown, a friend star, if the Celtics fold and flame out in the playoffs. That's a name I'd probably wait on. Yep. Ducosin says, Paul George could be a free agent, has a player option. And it sounds like negotiations between him, his people, and the Clippers aren't going very well. So PG might say, hey, I want, if I'm going to test the market, I'm out. You know, PG might take that, take a huge offer from Detroit. A sorry team like Detroit that pays the uh, bad team tax and overpays for Paul George. They'd be better, you know. Better than 14 wins. <laughs> That's for sure. They'd be better than 14 wins. But, but yeah. Greg Cuss shifting gears and talking about Drew Holiday. It made sense for cap reasons for the Seas to do it. Good for Drew and the money. What is it? Four years, 135, I think that's right. 135. So that's roughly 39 per year. First year at 30. Salute. <laughs> get that money, man. Get that money. All, all of y'all. Get that money if y'all can. If a team's going to offer it, where do I sign? Where do I sign? I mean, I need folks like that in my life, business-wise. Is that all you need? Oh, man, here. You do you. Go do you. That's the kind of folks I need in my life, and I'm sure most of y'all do, too. Need folks in your lives that just like money ain't an object. Money ain't a thing. Where where do I sign? Do you need my bank info? What do you need wired? What wire info do you need? Indeed, Justin. Yep, right there. Doc got that money and Buck's not. Yeah. Mm hmm He ain't lying. I need that as a as a as a sound clip. He ain't lying. <laughs> From coming to America. Yeah, I might have to do that myself. Find that one. But yes, we are talking about the Rockets finishing 41 and 41 this season. 19 win improvement from last year. Didn't quite make the playoffs. Didn't quite make the play in. Heck, Warriors, Warriors and uh, was it Minnesota? No, not Minnesota. Um, Sacramento. 46 wins and nine and ten spot. Man, Woo. boy, it's tough in the West. It's tough in the West, but hey. Where you are, gotta compete in the West. But yes, thirty-three minutes in, we're talking less talk. Houston Rockets, talking to Rockets, not spending too much time on the Rockets' win today over the Los Clippers to finish at forty-one and forty-one. But the Rockets did beat the Clips one sixteen one hundred five. A man Thompson had his first triple double in almost forty minutes of action. A man with eighteen points. Eight for nine from the floor, 11 rebounds, 10 assists, three steals, three block shots. Cam Whitmore. Oh, look, yeah, come on, folks. Let me, let's, let's talk about this. Cam Whitmore had five assists. Five assists. Cam Whitmore. What, the last three to four games, he's had at least four assists? Cam Whitmore, Mr. Tunnel Vision himself for most of this season and his one year at Villanova. Tunnel Vision, Mr. One assist per game in college. Mr. Barely one assist his first, what was it, 40 games in the NBA. Five assists today, fans, five assists. Dolores, how are you doing? That's a name, new name I haven't seen in a while. Much love to you, Dolores. Thank you for chiming in. Tell your friends about this show. Tell your friends about the Houston Round Bar View. Appreciate that. Thank you for the comment. What do y'all think about this from Jamon? Coming from the top rope. Cam is a better version of Jalen Green. Hmm. 
Justin, yep. I like Tari's fire, but he learned a hard lesson trying to provoke the wars. Yep. Damon, you and Gary Bankston. Cam is growing already better than Jalen. Mm. Damn. Oh, yeah. Y'all are harsh. Y'all are tough. It's a tough room. Tough room. Tough, tough, tough room. Tough room. Space says, definitely proud of our men. Triple dub today. Correct, cuz. <laughs> Love it. Can't wait for the playoffs and watch Dallas lose. Mavs Clippers in that first round, 4-5 matchup. Somebody going to go home upset. It might be a different franchise in losing the first round. A man rebounds better than Jabari. What's well, a different kind of rebound? I mean, Jabari does still get, get rebounds. Yep, that's the long-term issue right there. Cam and those knees. But y'all are tough, man. Take a sip of my adult refreshment. Oh, space thing. That's, that's harsh, man. That's just harsh. Saying Jabari seems soft mentally. No, no, I disagree with that. No, no, no. His, his dad makes sure of that. Yeah, it's not that. Yeah, it's not that. He's not consistent. Period. I mean, He's going. I, I think the Rock is still trying to figure out his best position, where he can showcase his complete skill set. But, but no, I, no, no, no. <clears throat> I disagree with that that assessment. Jamon says, "I'll be rooting for the Mavs to beat the Clippers." It'd be funny to see Harden lose in the first round. I wouldn't, wouldn't be sad if it happens. Since y'all are talking about it. Well, see, that's that's different though, Space Age. Not one to mix up in the paint. Doesn't make him soft mentally. Just not a physical player. That's physical. You know, physicality. That's not mental. I mean, you know, not everybody likes to bang with the big boys. Like, you know, not don't like physical contact. But since y'all brought it up. That's the seeds in the West. OKC won. How about that? Those youngsters led by SGA. One seed, the reigning champs. Two seed, Denver Nuggets. Minnesota, three seed. With their turmoil, rich, pro rich people problems, turmoil, and ownership. Clippers, four. Mavs, five. Suns, six. Pels, seven. Lakers, eight. Kings, the Kings, nine. Warriors 10. Mm. How about that? I had a question. Who uh let's see. Coming out the West. Probably I'm gonna probably say Denver. <laughs> probably, probably. And that's a that's a that's a 180. Before they won a championship last season, I wouldn't pick Nuggets for doing anything because they hadn't got it done. I just didn't I did not believe they were gonna get it done. They didn't got it done. <laughs> There'll be, yeah, correct cuts. I'll I'll still do some live stream shows. It might be under the Let's Talk Houston Rockets, you know, umbrella, but with M NBA slant, I'll figure out. But there will be live stream shows. So just a note to everyone, subscribe to the channel. Click on that bell so you can receive notifications when new live stream shows are posted. But I'm going to do some. Yeah, just because the playoffs have started and the Rockets aren't part of them, which I think I let me put myself on the big screen for this when I say it. I believe, I think this will be the last season the Rockets don't make the playoffs for a while, barring injury, of course, a lot of injuries to key people. Next season, the Rockets will be in the play in, playoff, whatever. I believe that. The Rockets are doing their part to make my prediction of a Rockets Detroit finals in four years come true. My team ain't and ain't even close to doing their part. But <clears throat> Rockets doing their part. So salute to them for doing that. I just saw it. I want to smile and thank Dolores for her comment. Thank you, Dolores. God bless you. Love your show. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you for those very kind words. 
New Orleans talent too inconsistent. They got to get it. They got to prove it to me. And as Gary says, hit that like button, comment on the videos because apparently that helps too with the alg algorithms. Because goodness knows, shifting gears. But all I did was post a 90 second clip interview with Chloe Kitts from South Carolina. One of the lesser known starters for the Gamecocks. In that conversation, that video has almost 30,000 views on YouTube and almost 55 on TikTok. 55,000 on TikTok. So, I, hey, whatever. But keep in mind this the Rockets o OKC, a top four protected first in both 24 and 26. So based on finishing 41 to 41, they do not have great odds of vaulting into that top four to keep the pick. But there's a chance. Not a huge chance, but there's a chance. They have Brooklyn's pick. But the Rockets own pick, if it's not in top four, it will go to OKC. Like they need more picks, more first round picks. They got 8,000 of them, you know. And a young, talented team that, once again, <laughs> got the one seed in the West. <laughs> Man. Boy. But we'll see what they can do come playoff time. What those youngsters can do come to playoffs. To the East. Boston. Number one seed by a whole lot <laughs> in the East. Knicks two. Bucks three. Cavs four. Magic five. Pacers six. Philadelphia, Joel Embiid at seven. I don't know if the big fella can hold up, but if he can, oh boy, Sixers, Knicks. Mm. Knicks would be done early. <laughs> Man, if, if, if. That's a big if about Embiid, but yeah. All right, let's go back here. Correct cuts. We need to shoot for a no less than top seven seed next season. With Eme the coach, even though I'd be fine with the current roster, I see major roster construction coming soon. Don't know who's going to get moved, who's going to stay, but if Eme ain't pleased, which he said before the season, he wants to make the playoffs. Yeah, I see players being shuffled around. Yeah, he said it. He wanted he wanted to see improvement as well, and, and they did improve. Clearly, they did have a few too many games where they stubbed their toe. The effort wasn't there. The consistency wasn't there. They didn't bring it. They did just enough to lose enough games, you know, things like that. And this where they're forty-one to forty-one, and not in the plan. And Justin seemed like that OKC rebuild took years. And a million picks to get where they are, but number one in the West. How about that? Salute to them. And before I forget, got to do it. Want to do it. Such a lovely audience tonight. You, you look so wonderful today. Give yourselves a round of applause. Give yourselves a hand. I'm, I'm in my coming to America mindset here. What is this? This is a new one. What is this? It's a parade inside my city. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that one. Any honest, I thought that was a good one. But yeah, <laughs> I forgot about it. I was curious what that was. Tony, Tony, how are you doing, Tony? We'll talk Cougars at some point, Tony. Cougar football has got a good coach, finally. <clears throat> finally. <laughs> Rockets have Brooklyn's pick. Space age, and if lottery wise they land in the top four, they'll have their own pick. If it doesn't, they'll have just Brooklyn's pick because 
their pick to OKC is only top four protected in this draft and the 26th draft. So they could have just one first round pick, the pick from the Nets. This is fun. Y'all make it fun. Talking basketball, talking Rockets. Reminder, just because the playoffs start, and I did make a slide of it, but the play-in Tuesday, 8 seed Lakers, 7 seed Pell, 6.30 p.m. Central on TNT. 10 seed Golden State, 9 seed Sacramento, 9 o'clock TNT. Wednesday, April 17th, 8 seed Miami versus 7 seed Philadelphia, 6 o'clock. 10 seed Atlanta versus the 9 seed Bulls, 8.30. Those two games are on ESPN. Friday, April 19th, the winner of the Hawks Bulls game will face the loser of the Heat Sixers game. And then West Coast, Western Conference, the winner of the Golden State Sacramento game will face the loser of the Lakers Pels game. So the winner of the seven eight matchups will be in the playoffs. The loser of the 7-8 seed matchups will have one more chance to win to get in. It all makes sense? I believe so. Can I talk about it some more? Young fella can't win more five assists. I think it was a career high. He had four, the, what, two, at least two of the last few games. He had five dimes today. He's no longer tunnel vision. He's passing the ball. And making good passes too, not you know those too many, too much flash. Just making simple passes. Sometimes that's all you need. You don't need to hit that home run pass. Just get it to your teammate and let them do the work. Let them score the bucket. But yes, Cam Whitmore, twenty-one points, nine for seventeen from the floor, two for six from three, just one for three from the foul line, six rebounds. Five assists. Rockets have 31 assists on 50 baskets. 31 assists. Took 103 shots. Clippers took 104. So the shots were flying all over the place today. Rockets won the game 116 105 to finish the season 41 and 41. Boban in possibly his last game as a Rocket. I know some of y'all hope that. Scored 13 points in the fourth quarter. Six for eight from the floor. Eight rebounds, one assist. One steal, one block shot. And missed two straight free throws. So everyone in the building could get free chicken. And if y'all saw the game, <laughs> y'all saw the game when Boban missed the first free throw. The fans started cheering because the promotion is if a player in the fourth quarter misses two free throws, two straight free throws at the line, everybody gets free chicken. But once Boban missed that first free throw, the crowd started chanting. Boban's like, yeah, I got it. I got you. I got you. I got you. And then he missed the second one. Crowd went nuts. <laughs> He's a people person. He's the man. Gary says Boban is the new chicken man. Good for him. Good for the fans. Oh, is that where Jamal went? Well, he's back in Texas. All right. Well, good for him. Still in, in the SEC. Mm, well, I won't say anything. Justin, you know what I'm thinking, though, but I won't say it. <clears throat> but good for him. If Tony M's watching, he can put up the the emoji to express what I'm what I'm thinking. <laughs> but yeah, good for Jamar. I know the Longhorns aren't the number one team in, in a lot of the uh way too early polls though. I don't know. But that's another topic for another time. For another show. But that show can also be seen here on the Houston Round Ball Review. YouTube channel. Lottery 
you see, what was it? J was Jamon or Space Age? May 12th, right? Lottery's May 12th? Yep. May 12th. What is that? I guess seeing uh, seven o'clock central. I think that'll be the, it'll be before a playoff game. So it'll be like a lead into whatever playoff game that'll be on May 12th. But before that, there will be other live stream shows. Which we'll mix in Rockets discussion with the playoffs as well. Oh, got to do this. If you want to be a part of the advertising. Because this will be the last show sponsorship for Byron Riley until the fall, most likely. Just email me there. Kgardner at T-H-E-H-R-R dot com. If you want to advertise. Had some things apparently fall through. Had a big thing fall through. Could have set me up for the whole year. But got to keep pressing forward. One more time. Email Kgardner at the H-R-R dot com. You want to sponsor this show, sponsor Folks Talking Sports, sponsor my one on nuns, sponsor the interviews, a lot of stuff going on. Hey, I got a lot of content on the Houston Round Ball Review YouTube channel. Solo, where are you? There you are. Thank you, my man. Been talking about it. Rockets finished the season at 541 and 41. Loris, thank you. I hope you are correct. For me, the best is yet to come. I hope so. Thank you for putting it out there in the universe. I appreciate that. Thank you. Let's see. Solo, what are your thoughts on the Rockets this summer? Do you believe the Rockets should make a bold move this summer or wait till the season starts to see how everything meshes between the supposedly new Jalen Green, meshes with Al P, if it fits, if it works, if they win? Then if it doesn't make a deal by February deadline, what say you? So Dolores, just going to do this. Dolores, thank you very much. Hope you are correct. But yes, your Houston Rockets capped off the 2023-24 NBA season with a 116-105 road win over Los Clippers and finished 41 and 41. 19 wins better than the previous season under the previous regime. Solo says, well, Craig Cut says this. I really want to be patient and see how we get going at the start of the season. Don't think it's going to happen, but but solo, I would try and trade the net, the net pick for a win now piece. More, I think that's more along the thinking of the rationale of Jamon and, and Gary Bankston. And again, for those chiming in last moments, Rockets O OKC a top four protected first round pick in this coming draft. So unless the Rockets get lottery luck and leap into the top four spots. Their first round pick will go to OKC. They'll still have the Nets pick, but there's a chance they only have one pick and not two first round picks. The odds are not great, but you know, it's between a seven and nine percent chance that the Rockets do leap into those top four the ping pong ball combination combinations come up and land between one through four and in that scenario they'll keep the pick but if not then the pick will go to okc and okc will hoard them and keep them and do whatever they it is they want to do with all those picks that they have what is the last count okc has like eight thousand first round picks from here until 2080, something like that. Correct cuts. In our hand, I see four and a possible spade reference. Uh-huh. We got a good hand, though. Don't blow it. He may and stone. Jamon, I feel like we need to have good luck with these picks since we never picked the first the past three years. 
May 12th. May 12th, but we'll have shows between now and May 12th. So to worry about that, I'll mix in a few more shows, college, some college football content. Not, no, not too much because of spring football practice is over. Spring games are over. That was yesterday. But I'll mix in some college basketball news. I'm probably done criticizing the Houston Cougars women's team because they're, they're bad. They have no plans of getting better. Talk about the men's team. Talk about the Rockets. Talk about the playoffs. Again, take a look at the seeds. Eastern Conference seeds. Boston one. Knicks two. Bucks three. Cavs four. Orlando Magic five. Pacers six. Sixers seven. Heat eight. Bulls nine. Hawks ten. And then in the West, OKC one. Denver two. Timberwolves three. Clippers four. Mavs five. Sun six, Pell seven, Lakers eight, Kings nine, Warriors ten. That Clippers Mavs, I'm kind of forward to that one. That, that Clippers Mavs four or five is more intriguing to me than that. What is it? Cavs Orlando. Mm, oh, yeah. It's a four or five matchup. Yeah. <laughs> and has some young, talented players, but yeah, whatever. It, it ain't like that Clippers Mavs, though. Solo says Clippers versus Mavs are going to be a fun series. Yep, I agree. Looking forward to that one. Bucks Pacers only if Giannis is healthy. Only, only. Could be a lot of points scored. A <laughs> whole, whole lot of points scored in that one. Yep, Will knows. Will knows. Brother Gibson, how are you doing? Oh, uh, yeah, I agree with that. If Big Fella's healthy, the Sixers will beat the Knicks. Yes. Jalen Brunson will get his. That'd be about it for the Knicks. Philly over the Knicks. It almost it almost seems too good to be true on that one, but I don't. If I had any money, I'd bet it on Sixers to win that series. But if Boston's come out of the East. If they don't, it might be time to just break it. You know, break up the, the team. But these final moments of this edition of the Houston Round Ball Review presents Let's Talk Houston Rockets. One more time for this season as we wrap it up. It's brought to you by Byron Riley CPA.com. Brother Gibson, I hope you taking care of your business, get the taxes in on time. Everybody as well. Solo, you making on big dollars. J Mon, Space Age, Dolores, Tony. All y'all high rollers. This website, Byron Riley CPA.com. One more time, the website, ByronRileyCPA.com. Call the number 832-303-3995. Again, the number 832-303-3995. Give him a call. He'll help you out. He, he and his staff help you out. See, Will knows. He took care of his business. That'll do it. A reminder. My man Thompson had his first and won't be his last NBA triple-double today in the Rockets, 116-105, win over the Clippers. Young fella had 18 points, 11 rebounds, 10 assists, and decided to add three steals and three block shots as well in his 40 minutes of action. Got a bright, bright, bright future for young Mr. Thompson. And hopefully his brother can resolve safely his blood clot issue and resume hoop action this summer and be ready for his second season in the fall. Wasn't him a healthy recovery, not a speedy recovery, a healthy recovery. All right, family, that'll do it for this edition of the Houston Round Ball Review presents Let's Talk Houston Rockets. As always, much love. <laughs> Hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel. Click on that bell so you can receive notifications of when new shows pop up. And they're going to pop up because, you know, playoff time 
Rockets aren't playing, but there will be playoff shows, playoff editions of this show, the playoff slant. But as always, thank you very much for taking time out of your schedules, your routines to join me to discuss your favorite team, the Houston Rockets, who are on the on the come up. Things are going in the right direction for them at 41 and 41. As always, remember this, never forget this. Since 1994, the Houston Round Ball Review, local name, global perspective. Game over. Peace.